The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling the word of truth. How beautiful it have been, this Christendom without ending in apostasy, but rather producing each and every believer to the maximum glorification of Christ, wherewith he has been predestined to that maximum glorification of Christ as he grows up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. And how true and great would have been that each and every church age believer would have been attained to that great maximum glorification of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through the daily intake of Bible doctrine in the terms of ice concept and dispensing technique of dispensations. Only when the one who has been kept over here as an in charge for them, the pastor teacher to feed them, to feed them with the knowledge of Bible doctrine would have read and made the life principle which has been given to Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapter 2. The great verse could be verse number 8, 9, and 10, which has been told, But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. You do not be like those rebellion people. Therefore open thy mouth and eat that I give unto thee what to eat. Open wide. It's not just open, but in the Hebrew it says open wide and eat which I am going to give you. And then furthermore, during the period of Ezekiel, he was been given what to eat. He was been given to eat are written without and within, that is what, within and without. Lamentations, mourning, and the great wrath of the Lord. So how could I eat those things when the Lord has been given? Again, he explains further for us the mechanics. And Ezekiel was saying, behold, a hand being put forth. And in that hand there was a roll of scroll. And not only this, why Lord has told him not to be rebellion, to eat that scroll what has been given to him, and to preach that word what has been given to them, a warning for those people, is purely the best reason that we are able to face today in the midst of this great apostasy. Apostasy being the rejection of Bible doctrine to be taught in the pulpits. The rejection of Bible teachings, which have to be number one priority in the pulpits. And furthermore, it is very great for us to note that the great commission given to Ezekiel in chapter 2, the first verse, very verse itself, Stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. Stand upon thy feet is a common term used among unbelievers as well. That whenever they want to get married to, a, to, to, to his son, they want to say, let my son first get stand upon his own feet. So that he should be capable of handling his own family. Today as such, in comparison to the allegory, how many of us have really been able to stand upon our own two feet, to stand to the responsibility laid down upon our shoulders? To be laid down upon, to look the burden that has been laid down upon us, the massa. How many of us have been really capable of standing for the ministry and the work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in our lives? And then the second verse tells, And the Spirit entered into me. And he spake unto me. And the Spirit set me upon my feet. 
that I heard him that spake unto me. Unbelievers can do a good education or can earn some money by making some business and they can be able to stand in the two feet in this world. But when it comes to the mission work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, it is nothing but the Spirit which has to cause us to permanently control our soul. And it is Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which is going to make us to stand. It is He who is going to stand before the Lord to do His qualification, to take that responsibility. And if it is not by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to be standing to take that responsibility upon our shoulders, then we are going to be utterly failed in our mission. And that's why we emphasize a lot upon for you to rebound and get back into the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, whenever we start learning the doctrine. Until and as you as a pastor teacher follow this command, you cannot make your believers to be for the importance of the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who permanently indwells in the believers as well. So that among those believers, they could be the future pastors. Or they could be the future missionaries. Or they could be the future evangelists. And until and unless you train them up in the inculcation of the word of the Lord, they cannot stand. And it is by the Spirit when entered into the Ezekiel body, it really caused him to stand upon the feet. If not, he wouldn't have been stood. A principle for us to learn, it is not the human energy, it is the divine operative will that is going to work in us, which is pleasing unto Jehovah. What a great fact it is. Philippians, in Philippians, Apostle Paul quotes the same verse. The operative will, the thing that has been desirable to God will be done through you by the one who operates in you, which is nothing but Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But why aren't we able to understand the simple truth? Because we are not capable of learning or acquiring the knowledge, which is Ginesco. Though we have idea in our midst, which is given for us through the knowledge of Bible doctrine in our completed canon of Scripture. It is purely by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, when Ezekiel could stand upon his own two feet. Today, even as we stand in the pulpit, it is not by our own energy. It is have to be a thorough preparation ministry by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, for us as we give number one priority for Bible doctrine. And then further, what is the commission in verse 3 of chapter 2? It is Lord who is going to send us among the midst of these rebellious people who rebel for Bible doctrine, who don't value Bible doctrine, who don't give number one priority for Bible doctrine. And the same work which Lord has done through Ezekiel, he tells, I am going to send you among this rebellious nation, they have rebelled against me. And they and their fathers have transgressed against me unto this very day. If the same reprimandation could be stood for us today, it will be that we and our fathers have rejected the true mystery doctrine of the church age, the true unique spiritual life. Neither are the people that have come to look and to realize the grace opportunity, the grace privileges being laid down upon our shoulders. That could be the very simple reprimandation for us. Until this very day, how many of them have really known the doctrine of the Zeus of Aya? How many of them have really known the two power options, the three spiritual skills, the ten problem-solving devices, and the four stages of the subtle spiritual life, the fourth one being ex exit, resurrection, or ex-anastasis? How many of them have really given doctrine as number one priority to learn this truth? And as the strong recommendation goes, since they were impudent children and stiff hearted and now... The same thing is going on. And since you have been prepared by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, I send you unto them. What a great work laid down upon the thrill of a work of a pastor teacher. Impudent children and stiff heartened. The one who is obstinate and unyielding heart. And we are there to go. And to tell, to yield. What to yield? Yield through the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by learning Bible doctrine. 
He'll, through the work of light, get the Holy Spirit to give number one priority for His Word. And that is what you and I have to yield. Because many morons don't have the true morphology of the word from the original languages. They tell yield means what? They do not know what is yield. And they want to say, do this, do that, then it is yielding. No, yielding is to be fruitful to the hearing of the ministry of light God, the Holy Spirit, and to yield the work wherewith he has been obtained for you to the praise of his glory and his grace. To set forth once again, as Jonah preached, those people, they yielded for repentance. Our yield is what today, where we are rejecting the doctrine, there it has to be number one priority for doctrine again. That should be the yield. But what is happening today? We aren't capable of understanding the simple process of yield. And, furthermore, because of their obstination and unyieldingness, Lord still calls them as a rebellious people and he sends once again grace precedes judgment. And he sends to them this great prophet. This great prophet to account, to be accounted. Telling to the point whether they hear or forbear because they are rebellious. Yet they shall know that there had been a prophet among them. Whether today they are going to yield for the maximum glorification or not, our duty is to tell to them that the Lord has revealed the super mechanics of this great Christian way of life, so that they can yield and show forth the great glory of Jehovah and great maximum glorification of Christ, which is commonly available to each and every believer of this church age, which is commonly applicable to each and every believer who has been called as Alec Nicetes, who is being turned out. We are not here to tell, we couldn't know, we couldn't learn, we couldn't realize. And that's the duty of the pastor teacher, to stand in the spirit, upon his own two feet, and to be thoroughly prepared for whatever manner they think they can really challenge you. And furthermore, our Lord tells, since you have been appointed as a pastor teacher, you will have not to be afraid of these people neither be afraid of their words, like though bribes and thorns they be with you, and you dwell among scorpions, do not be afraid of their words, nor by their looks, nor be dismayed or confused, because they are rebellious people. Even today many critics will tell to our tapes, as well as the tapes of Robert Bunker Time Harris's, we don't care. Our duty is to continue and to give you the word, so that you can have eternal rewards so that you can have this extra blessing for eternity to be fulfilled. We don't have any other pleasure in you telling, doing this, doing that, shouting at the top of our voice to follow this and to not to follow that. But rather we are here to tell to you your own life that could be added unto your account. To know and to look and to realize the true spiritual gifts, not to work upon the defunct spiritual gifts. To look and to realize and to give number one priority for the word of the Lord. Whether you take it or not, we don't care. Whether you criticize or what, we don't care. Whether you spread pamphlets about us, we don't care. Our duty is to continue, we will continue. And furthermore, Ezekiel was been commanded for the next time in verse 7. And thou shalt speak my words unto them. Underline the word my, if you have Bible. This is not the words wherewith you can preach XYZ things before the sight of Jehovah. We are preaching the things pertaining to his word. Not in the emotion of the flesh. That we jump around and dance around and interpret for our own language. My words represent true exegesis. My words cause us to give number one priority as a pastor teacher, the burden laid one upon our shoulders for true exegesis. My words is what your brother and Lord wants to be accounted to your account, even to the hearer's account. Any other words apart from his mind, it is not been acceptable. And to preach any other words apart from the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit is not at all recordable. Neither we can come, we can look, nor we can understand. 
remember the words, and thou shalt speak my words unto them. And whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, you don't worry. Your duty is to preach my words. That is what I am following today. Whether they are weavers of my tips in the YouTube or not, I don't care. Lord knows to whom it has to be reserved and kept, and Lord will send to them. My duty is to deliver, and operative will of work, Lord will do it. The true ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to be controlled and to speak His words, when we are able to stand in our own feet by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit will be a true work for a pastor teacher laid down upon his shoulders. He will not worry about the softness of this world. Neither he will worry that he has to be here to please someone by telling that though the defunct spiritual gifts have been seized, telling that no, they are still into force. Though the miracles and healings have been seized, they tell they are still into work. Lord knows how to work those miracles or healings today if it has been necessary. And further, in many of the apostles, when it has not been mentioned about these temporal spiritual gifts, who are you to speculate about those spiritual gifts again? When Ephesians was been written, he never mentions about those gifts at all. He comes to the point of the fivefold ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, as many moron theologians think, but it is fourfold ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Among them, too, the apostles and the prophets have been seized. And we do have now the gift of a pastor teacher, pastor hyphen teacher. Both works representing to him. And we do have a great one. A great one of an evangelism to an unbelievers. A great gracious gift of Lord upon this people. Not only being the people of nation of Israelites, which was there in the Old Testament, but also to the people of these Gentiles who are being wretched, who will never change, who are not faithful. Then to an evangelist has been sent to them so that anyone who is really interested in the word of the Lord by the grace ministry to whom Lord knows that they are going to be his children, they could come to the realization of the truth. And further in verse 7 he tells, after speaking my words, do not worry whether they hear or forbear, because they are most rebellious. But you, son of man whom I am appointing you, hear what I say unto you. Hear what I say unto you. He who has an ear, let him hear. Be not like that rebellious people, like that rebellious house, but rather you open thy mouth and eat which I give unto thee. Opening thy mouth and eating, the process of faith, non-meritorious system of perception. That means readily available to learn doctrine. Readily available not to give any other priorities, but only priority for number one, because Second Timothy 2.15 concludes us to that. And when he was ready, by standing in the Spirit, and when he has been prepared his mind to preach the words of Lord God Almighty, and when he has been told not to worry about the people, that means when he has gone through this process of that, that there should be a prophet among them. And when he was looked, behold, a hand was sent unto him, a roll of book was therein, a roll of scroll. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without, and there was written therein lamentations and mourning and oh. And he ate it. So he opened his mouth and he caused to eat that roll. That is what the process of learning of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And in 3 1 he continues, Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go and speak unto the house of Israel. And so I obeyed, I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And further he sends now the commission, prepared man. And our Lord said unto me, Son of man, get, go, get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of strange speech, or of an hard language of the house of Israel, not to many people of a strange speech, and of an hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Surely, had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But further he concludes, But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hear unto me, for all the house of Israel are obstinate and unyielding in their heart. They are impudent and hard-hearted. So he says, Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads, as an adamant harder that flint. 
Then flint have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Moreover, he said, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak, you have to speak. I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart, and hear with thine ears, and go, get thee to them of the captivity unto the children of thy people, and speak unto them, and tell them, thus said the Lord God, whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear. What a great truth of passage for us from Ezekiel chapter 2, 1, verses 3, 11. If we as believers in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ could give a little instruction of being given the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher to go through this passage, we would really get a great number of change in the ministry where with Lord God wants us to do it. So ponder over these things as we shall continue in the next step. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with through the word. Help us to follow the words that have been given to us to learn the lesson from Ezekiel 2, 1 through Ezekiel 3, 11, so that the hearers who can hear to this can be of a great worth to the praise of your glory in your grace. For this extent we pray in Christ's name, Sovereign Lord. Amen.